What's up, YouTube? This is John back with another episode of Engineering Awesome. And today, we're going to go ahead and do the wind metal bandsaw unboxing and setup. It's going to be all in one. And kind of bear with me because I have never done assembly on camera. I'm going to try and cut out the little bits. I'm going to try and talk more while I do it and try and do it a little bit more quickly and kind of explain the quality of what I'm looking at. So let's go ahead and give this a try and see how it goes. We'll go ahead and give this a shot. Uh, the camera angles aren't really working out as well as I'd hoped that they might. Um, it's kind of hard to fit me into the, the picture here as you guys can kind of see and still get some floor shots because that's where I'm going to have to do the majority of the build. But we're going to go ahead and give this a shot and uh, see how it goes. I will definitely skip the parts where I'm not in the frame so that you guys don't have to try and sit through that. So we'll go ahead and open it up and see what we get. So right off the bat, uh, everything looks like it's packaged pretty decent. Manual right on top. We will set this aside though, I typically don't use them. Which I'm sure is the case for almost all of you. You guys can try and say that you definitely use a manual every time, but we always try and make it as far as we can without it. Alright, so it looks like this is the table. Now one thing that really led me to this particular bandsaw is the fact that while it's one of the cross cut type that comes down on your workpiece, it actually can be locked in a vertical position and you can shove your workpiece through which is a really interesting feature that I didn't see on a lot of the other competitors like maybe a Harbor Freight one that's in this price point. So one thing that I did just learn is that even this stuff is fairly sharp, so I am going to use some sheet metal gloves, as ridiculous as that sounds, just to avoid any possible cuts. And that's not to say that the manufacturing quality is subpar, it's just, you know how it goes. you got sharp corners here that they didn't buzz down, so definitely wear some kind of glove. Plus, it's a little chilly anyway. There's fasteners. Some kind of plastic handle. That's uh, I don't like plastic handles, just like the rest of us don't. It's on wheels to make it easy to move around the shop. It looks like those are legs. Probably a belt cover. I'm just guessing at this point because I haven't opened it up. With this many parts, we are definitely going to need to use the manual, I think. Well, that's at least a solid bar that didn't cheap out too much there. Again, the work table. So it's kind of hard to get everything out of here. They did not leave anywhere to get your fingers underneath some of the components. A bit of a bummer, but ultimately not a huge deal. Alright, so here is the main piece, and this is likely going to be a challenge for me to remove from the box myself. If you've got a second person, I highly recommend uh, asking them to help you because this whole setup was very heavy and hard to get into my garage and move around on my own. Uh, it also, one thing I don't like seeing is that the blade is actually, it looks like, or, yep, it's already attached. Uh, so that's kind of a cut hazard, so I uh, highly recommend the, the sheet metal gloves. We're going to go ahead and look at this because what I suspect is that the base may need to be put together beforehand. And the, the base may attach directly to this. It may not. 
we're going to go ahead and check and see what it suggests as the first step. All right, so it looks like it does just attach directly to this, so I am going to have to muscle this out and then probably muscle it around past that point. So I'm going to go ahead and take a short um, remission, I guess, uh, if that's the proper word, so that I can kind of get a table in here to help me put this together. I'll set it up over there, and I'll lift this out off camera, put it up there, and then we'll just work on it from there. All right, so I was able to finally get this up here. This is definitely not something to do on your own. Uh, you definitely need another person. Uh, I'm probably going to be feeling this one tomorrow. But right off the bat, I got to say construction quality wise, I'm impressed. Uh, the casting looks pretty good. It looks about like you'd see with any cast iron casting. I mean, you can't, you can't gripe too much. It looks pretty good. The paint looks good. There's a little bit uh, of gaps. But ultimately, this is really nice. I'm very impressed. Uh, it looks like this is a ground surface here. Um, one thing that I will say that I found on mine is that uh, when I opened the box up and finally wrestled this monster out, there was some bolts left over in the bottom. And I was like, what the heck does this go to? So I got a little nervous on that, but there was only one bolt, washer, nut, and uh, lock nut, or lock washer. And it looks like it goes to this part here. So you can put pieces in that are angled. Uh, that's kind of cool, but ultimately I probably won't use it that frequently. It's still kind of a nice feature. It's got a little uh, section back here so that you can get the, the degree right. But I'll use my uh, machinist square and square that up real nice. But, I mean, this thing is, is pretty nice. This is a decent quality looking motor and looks in this situation are everything because I haven't plugged it in. Uh, that looks pretty good. Um, the blade I can hardly see so I don't know if it looks good but uh, I like the mechanism for uh, turning back here. It feels pretty good. Uh, this is the, the mechanism for controlling how fast it goes down. It's just a spring which that's fine. That's, that's no big deal. Uh, this is a, a budget saw and I got a lot more than I was expecting out of this. This is this is going to be an excellent addition to my small machine shop and it's got wheels so I can move it around. The motor is 120 volt three quarter horse so that's actually pretty good. Uh, the capacity of this is four by six inches so uh, that's four inches tall six inches wide. That's going to be Awesome. This is this should be able to cut everything that I need it to. The Tag CNC mill that I've got here is only capable uh, Y direction of doing five inch pieces, and there's only uh, enough Z travel for six inches. Now there's 12 inches this way, but you know that could be uh, however long on this. So this should be able to cut anything that I can possibly machine on this. If I ever upgrade to say a Tormach, I might end up needing something bigger, but I can't see that happening for quite some time. So let's dive into it a little bit further and start putting it together. Now I've got it up on these saw horses because I need to be able to put the legs on. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start doing that and see if we can't figure it out. So there's probably going to be some skipping. Uh, I'll skip through me reading because you don't need to don't need to bother with that portion. Alright, so I, I spent a little bit of time uh, gathering up some of my stuff. Uh, it requires a wrench, basically. That's a 14 millimeter. I've got a normal box end wrench and a socket wrench because both the hex bolts, the M8s, uh, are 14 millimeter here and then the nut is 14 millimeter. So that should make it a lot easier to get this together. Um, I will say that the pictures don't tell you what bolts go in it and I know that's ridiculous but I really like to see uh, the pictures that say you know M8 here whatever or A goes here with B and C attached whatever uh, that doesn't matter much but you do need to read and then go from there so 
I'm going to go ahead and get the legs put on down here, and then we'll move to this end. All right, so I've got the legs put on the end down here. Um, now what I found is that those legs are really floppy. So I'm gonna definitely have to put some cross braces in, but I can't put the cross brace lengthwise like the manual suggests after the manual suggests that you put it up on a surface like this. I don't really know what they were thinking there, but uh, I'm gonna have to do that. Then I'm gonna have to move it a little bit, get it here, and then force the saw horses out and try and finagle it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cross piece there and I'm going to go ahead and attach the legs here. Now there's only two bolts in each leg. No big deal. All the legs are basically the same once you get right and left down. Um, so I will fast forward through that just like I did for these legs as well. So I got the legs on this side and I got the wheel bracket put on and the order that I did it in actually ended up mattering a little bit. I did it in the wrong order, so maybe this will help you guys if you do get this. So that cross piece is actually the piece that you need to install first. It sets the spacing, and the way it does that is it's got carriage bolts. So there's a little square here that goes through a square hole, and then the square hole on the piece that is the cross brace as well. And that kind of sets everything up nice and square, uh, I don't have it tight here so that when I set it down on the ground, it will allow me to uh, kind of move it as I need to to get these in lengthwise as well and get everything nice and squared up so that it rolls nice and sits nice where possible. I've got a pretty cracked floor on my garage here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that cross piece in on the other side as well, then get this down. And I'm going to change the camera angle, so don't hold that against me. I want you guys to be able to see more of the saw, less of me, so my face may be cut out of it, uh, which I know is disappointing, so I do apologize for that. So we'll go ahead and skip through, and uh, hopefully the next shot that you see is it sitting on the ground, and I'll do another quick overview. And um, once everything is together, we're going to do a test cut. I've got some uh, one and a quarter by three aluminum, some inch and a quarter by one and then some one by one aluminum that I just picked up from the scrap yard. So we'll go ahead and finish putting the legs on, hopefully get this off and then uh, I'll put the rest of it together, maybe film that portion of it. So here is the bandsaw. It's probably a lot smaller than some of you were thinking. This works out perfect for me because I've got a, a pretty big garage, but I park my uh, Sierra in it and then my wife also parks her car in here so you know space then starts to get a little tighter and uh, we've also each got a four-wheeler in here so uh, space continues to get tighter so something like this that is smaller is going to fit great in here um, it's going to fit right in with the uh, the small welder I've got under there with the sandblaster so let's go ahead and finish this up uh, now that I've got it on the ground, I am going to put the cross piece in here and then I'm going to go ahead and tighten up these bolts because that should make sure everything is nice and square. We can go ahead and finish, put the wheels on. Uh, I do still need to tighten that up and uh, we'll be able to put the stop and a couple other small things on here. Let's get into it. Alrighty. We got it. Now, that being said, definitely not going to be able to get a wrench in there. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this on, then I'll grab my ratcheting wrench and see if that fits. My guess is probably not, but we'll cross it. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, so let's see if this fits. I doubt it. It will not. Okay, old fashioned way. Alright, so I got all of that uh, 
tightened up. I was a little worried I might run out of memory doing that, but uh, we're good. So we'll go ahead and get the wheels put on, get some of that tightened up. One thing I will say is that that absolutely sucks. So make sure that you uh, budget some time in there for just for putting these on. And it may end up being that you have the end pieces, but once you get one on, you can't use a wrench in there easily like a socket wrench to do it real quick for the other one. There's just not quite enough room. Uh, at least that's what I found. Maybe you've got some really thin ones or something that you can you can get to fit in there. But I don't have some that'll fit, so I had to do it the old-fashioned way with the box-in wrench, and it was painful. So let's keep going. So I got the handle put on, and I also got the wheels put on. Now this is the moment of truth because. With about any of us, we're all looking to save space, utilize it as well as we possibly can, which means moving this around frequently. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a go and see how it looks. Hey, that's not too bad, really. Um, the handle is a little funky, but uh, as long as you get it pushed into the, the hole properly and it cams up, works just fine. Now it's stable enough, we can kind of lift it. I've been pretty curious on this as well, see what this ends up doing. Feels like that's actually going to work. I mean, it's not the finest speed control, but for the majority of us that are really just looking for hobbyist use, hobbyist use, uh, for me, I'm hoping for slight, like very, very, very low volume production. So I don't need it to be perfect. So there's something, some chain in here. Looks like in shipping. Ah. Looks like in shipping a chain got wrapped in there. I'm gonna try and get that out. Some kind of safety key. There we go. Now when it comes down it never hits on the blade. There's some stops. I think mine needs to be adjusted a little bit. Oh, that's perfect. So, when this comes down, it's a very simple little mechanism. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to turn this around using these handy dandy little wheels. So, that spring may be adjusted improperly for movement anyway. Actually, I'm sure there's some kind of locking mechanism that I just did not utilize there. So, make sure you're careful of that. This is can go up. So, what we've got here is an on-off switch, and then just a little tab that when it comes down, it hits that and shuts it off. That, I love seeing. That is, that is absolutely great. Now, while it's up, we've got a nice little clamping system here. Definitely not zero backlash, but who cares? Yeah, that is nice. I am very impressed with this thus far. All right, and we've got pulleys. So we're gonna need to find a little bit more stuff, I think. I really wanna know what these are for because I do believe probably for moving it. Some kind of safety feature if 
one were so inclined, you would be able to read the manual. Ta-da! Let's go through it and figure that out. Oh, that is so dead simple. It's embarrassing I missed that as an engineer. Oh, wow. Okay, so, guess what? We're going to flip it back around so I can show you guys that. Huh? Huh? It's pretty nice, right? Me. Well, that might not work. Alright, so... That's one safety mechanism that has been figured out. That just goes in there and then you can't lift this up. So that's great. Now, since I have already flipped this twice, let's go ahead and do it a third time because we've got the part stop that we still need to install. got this pin here which just slides in like that then there's a set screw right here that tightens down on top of that there we go now one thing I wasn't real impressed with was this. It's a uh, clamp of some kind. I thought it was a handle. It actually is not. So I uh, find I care less that it's made of plastic. Everything else on this seems made of metal so uh, I don't really have to worry about it too much. So there's the part stop so that if you were say running small production like I'm wanting to You'd be able to just throw this in here, clamp it up nice and tight. Once it rests against that, cut it, and you could process material very, very quickly that way. So let's move on. We've got this belt housing, which, moment of truth, I really hope it has the belt in it. Well, I'd really like to know how to get it apart. Hey, it does. We knew that, right? So, that knob I just undid is nothing. Don't undo that knob. That knob is not meant to do what I just did with it. So, this cams over. I believe to make belt adjustments easier. Whew. If it does, it barely does. So, that cam's over actually because that's where it's meant to go. You've got a bolt right here, which is how you adjust the tension. And it looks like I probably need to adjust it before we do any cutting. And this really needs to be installed too. So this is kind of a big safety thing so I don't recommend that you go without this. I probably will just for the sake of this video. Uh, another thing is that it's got an excellent diagram that shows you which so if we've got it in A which we do right now then we get 80 feet per minute on the blade speed and you can go all the way to 180 so that's pretty nice yeah that's weird how that opens but regardless it's nice to have the, the cover in general. Now, one thing I've been very, very curious about is this setup here. I guess I just 
don't see where this mounts or how. But, ah. I imagine that's what this bad layer is for. Then you can lock it in the up position. And, yeah, you probably want to attach it the proper way, but then you're able to do almost any size that you want. This thing, I tell you what, this thing is something else. I am very, very impressed with it. Um, it looks like you could even, you know, since we are a machine shop now, you would be able to just put a little guide in there. Um, that is that is really cool. I am a big fan of that. I'm probably going to try and figure out a method to uh, somehow attach this, uh, maybe here or something like that, so that this is always with it. Uh, once I do that, I'll probably post it. And you know what? Before I say that, there's a good chance that it's in the manual on how to do that. Don't know what this is. This is why we read the manual. So, this is absolutely for locking this. I've done something weird here, I think, that I shouldn't have done, that is not allowing me. Yeah, so I'm going to have to probably undo and pull that bolt out. Otherwise, I won't be able to lock it in. Better, I guess I can undo this one. So, what we've learned from that, there's nothing. You can do it however you want, apparently. It was just fine the way I did it. So now, there we go. And this can't, well, can't easily go over. Uh, it looks like you can tweak it a little bit, but it feels pretty stable too. It doesn't really feel like it's going to move. This base is cast iron. Uh, one thing is that the on off switch is a little far from the blade so you'd be reaching and hitting but you know i think we can get past that there's a tightening mechanism up here well you know what this is actually going to make it that you can lock it up this way will make blade changes incredibly easy so that is phenomenal again we are going to figure out what this is before the end of the video There it is. So, here is a bolt here, and this slides into that bolt and basically gives you another rest point. You'll see that there are several holes here. There are three, so there are two screws here, and then presumably another screw, which is probably underneath the manual, and that just gives you three points of contact. So. You've got a nice, stable table. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. Now, the reason why I'm going to is because I want to properly tension that, and then I will do a quick test cut, and we'll see how it cuts. Everything is set up. Um, I've got the, the tension and everything set where I want it. Um, I've got the spring tension set where I would like it. I've even got my workpiece set at about five and a quarter. I did use the part stop mostly just for giggles. I'm not going to cut a bunch of these or anything. 
I did find a slight limitation with this machine. So with as small as it is, there really aren't a whole lot of options for uh, supports uh, back on the end. So this is a fairly heavy piece of aluminum. It is four foot long. They were selling it for $1.50 a pound. I went ahead and bought half of what they had. Uh, at this point, I kind of wish I'd bought all of it. But I'm a little worried about it, it tipping back there and kind of messing up the cut down on this end. I think it's sitting flat. This clamp is excellent, actually. So I've turned it on, and I heard it, but I have not cut. So we're going to go ahead and do that now and just kind of see what happens. So you guys will get to be a part of the very first cut of this uh, bandsaw, and maybe that will help you guys judge if you're interested in buying one. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what it can do. All right, so it's done cutting. Uh, it did a pretty good job. I mean, it's not a perfect cut, but uh, it's not bad. Uh, this is what it looked like from the scrap yard and then this is the cut that I just did it's a you can kind of feel it a little bit more than you could on this one I know you guys aren't going to get a good representation just looking at it but ultimately I'm incredibly satisfied with this this is a really tough thing to cut just because it is so wide there's a lot of engagement there so the fact that it cut it even in the amount of time that it took which was Pretty significant. I think if you added a coolant mister, it probably would improve it quite a bit. And I'm probably not going to be cutting stuff this big very often. I've got this four foot piece. I'm going to cut some fixtures out of it. That's what this will be. I'm going to face it, pop some holes in it, and I'll use it for quick fixturing of uh, some stuff that I'm planning on making and putting on my Etsy shop. So, ultimately, I could not be happier with this. The setup was quick and easy. It was cutting, I mean, just immediately, and it works great. Uh, it's got a lot of good features that I don't think you can find in a lot of other products uh, in a similar price point, which is about the 250 275 range. I will put a link down below. Now, with that link, it is an Amazon affiliate link. If you guys do like the video, you think you might be interested in one of these saws, if you do click that link, it does help me out. Uh, it'll, it will allow me to do some more videos like this, and it is helping me to uh, tool my small micro machine shop up. And this is the very first video for the micro machine shop series. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you like uh, the video. Consider subscribing if you're interested in more content like this. And uh, make sure that you leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you think this video went, considering it was the very first video that I have done where I built something on camera. Uh, I think it's going to be kind of a challenge, but hey, you know, that's what we're here for. And uh, let me know if there's anything that you guys are interested in seeing out of not only the CNC, but maybe some of the other aspects of doing this. I plan on doing probably some small business videos once I get everything kicked off and moving a little bit better. Um, but... I would appreciate any feedback you guys have. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time on Engineering Awesome.